This is a, a set of mala beads, or it's just called a mala, that I picked up in the city of Kandy in Sri Lanka in 2008. Um, Kandy is a city in southern Sri Lanka. It's populated mostly by Tamils, and many of the Tamils are Hindus, even though most Sri Lankans are Buddhist. Um, and uh, this is a Hindu item of um, meditation or prayer. It's similar to the Christian or Catholic rosary. Um, many cultures employ these. They're usually referred to colloquially as prayer beads. Um, I don't use them. They hang unused around an equally unused statue that I have in my house of the Buddha, which has appeared in a couple of my videos in the past. It's a little keepsake now from my little time in Sri Lanka. They have no ritual significance to me whatsoever. They're just part of the decoration of my house. But I do practice meditation, and I often repeat, maybe not mantras, although I do repeat mantras depending on my mood, um, I'll repeat just about anything. Um, when I, I have repetitive strain injury in my right shoulder from my job, and I fix it by doing an equally repetitive exercise, and I count my repetitions. Oftentimes when I'm doing it, my infant son is sitting nearby, and he really likes it when I count. So, you know, you do the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, the little, wait for it, between 29 and 30 that little kids really like. Um, you do that long enough, repeating something with some sort of concentration on it. Um, and then there are many different ways to concentrate, by the way, when you're doing this. It's not just a case of putting your mind on it. You have to concentrate it in a certain way. Um, well, you don't even have to concentrate on it in a certain way. If you do concentrate it on a cer in a certain way, things will happen, and even if you don't, things will happen. Your mind will, as it were, plow its own furrow. And, you know, after a while, it, you get into a little zone. Something happens to your perceptions. Something happens to your perceptions of time. Something happens to your perceptions of space, maybe. Um, you go inside. You, you start to pay more attention to the repetitions themselves. Uh, sometimes you start paying re attention to each syllable, or um, I never do it out loud except for when I'm counting reps for my um, for my repetitive strain injury. But when I'm actually meditating, I never do it out loud. But you start hearing the words inside your own head. <laughs> you start feeling yourself pronounce each little word. Um, you start. Um, waiting sort of for each round to come back to where it began. You follow it in your mind. Um, there's no God involved at all. <laughs> there's no trickery involved. You're simply manipulating your mind. And in a certain sense, you're manipulating your body as well if you have to sit still, if you want to sit still while you're doing it. I generally sit still. Although occasionally I'll do the same thing while I'm doing Qigong, although Qigong or Tai Chi I generally do to music. Music of a certain sort, though. I have a um, feedback loop on my MP3 player, so I'll put on a song and I'll play it over and over and over again, if that's what I feel like doing. Um, I'll also put on just some long, extended New Age music, or and classical music. Piano lounge music is particularly good for this. And it, too, ends up sounding repetitive. If it's lounge music, or if it's one of those YouTube MP3s 
um, or YouTube uh, videos rather that I convert to an MP3. Did I say that? Um, if it's uh, an MP3 uh, from you know new age stuff, it generally is, um, or if it's long, it generally is repetitive anyway. Uh, even music, that cursed elevator music, or what would you call it, department store music or whatever, um, that has its purposes too when it comes to things like Tai Chi or even meditation. You're deliberately being repetitive. That's kind of alien as well to the Western mind. We don't like anything repetitive. It has to be, you know, we want a whole variety of different things. We can't seem to get into long music, long repetitive music. Um, my wife is from Southeast Asia. This doesn't bother her. I think if I was married to a Western woman, um, repetitive music would drive them crazy for some reason. People in Southeast Asia are just, well, if that's what you like to listen to, that's that's the way it is, I guess. And um, repetition is not a problem. It is a problem for us. Again, I think it's simply because we're so used to being distracted by novelties that we just never are capable of grasping um, that you can actually do that and actually like it. So what is happening here? This, unfortunately, mantra meditation... Uh, is Tantra, whether you like it or not. <laughs> it is. It's deliberately manipulating your experiences. Um, deliberately manipulating your mind. You may even be manipulating your central nervous system. People who study, people who meditate and meditate with mantras, uh, put electrodes on their brains and study their heart rate and all this kind of thing. And something does happen. That's the stuff that's observable from the outside. What happens in here? you start to, it does actually change your personality over time. I've been doing this for years. And I notice now, I find myself subconsciously, or not even subconsciously, unconsciously, going into repetitions in my own head, say when I'm waiting in line at the checkout counter at a grocery store or something, when I have to just stand and do nothing. Uh, or I will subconsciously start to manipulate because I've learned how to do it again with the aid of meditation, the particular muscle in my right shoulder that is giving me hell. And I manipulate it repetitively, methodically and slowly. I've learned to isolate that one particular muscle. Hopefully by the end of uh, eight months I'll have it fixed. Um, so I'm there's so many tantric angles to this. Um, first of all, manipulating the muscle from the inside. Learning inside your own mind how to isolate and manipulate one particular muscle is a small skill, but it can be approached tantrically. Uh, the advanced stage is you learn to manipulate your central nervous system. <laughs> you learn to manipulate, you know, I, I assume your spinal column when you do things like kundalini. You learn how to manipulate your actual brain. Uh, activity, I assume. I don't know, but the very fact that when you do these things, something does happen, and you do have experiences that actually do leave a mark on you, um, leads me to the conclusion that um, there's a lot more here than blind mumbo-jumbo. Maybe the actual words of the mantras could be anything. As I say to my son, um, counting to 100 with a little sort of lead up to each ten, each, you know, nine, ten, you know, uh, really makes them, whoo, you know, how babies will. Um, you can do anything and it will have an effect on you if you're in that frame of mind, if you decide that you're going to be positive about it, I guess, or if you're going to engage your emotions, if you're going to engage your, oh yes, and that's another thing. I said earlier, concentrating, um, is a many-faceted thing, and it is indeed. And try concentrating your emotions. <laughs> We're so used to having our emotions leading us around. How about you get in charge of your own emotions and um, concentrate on that? Concentrate on pushing your emotions in a certain direction. Um, we're used to having other people do it for us. Say, when I pick up an H.P. Lovecraft novel, I'm used to someone deliberately evoking from the outside a profound sense of horror and alienness and weirdness and everything. 
Um, I can do that to myself because all of the horror and everything is actually in here, and the the um, the spark, as it were, the stimulus is simply the outside world. Really, the activity is all taking place in my own head. I can manipulate my own emotions. I can concentrate my own emotions. I can concentrate my own thoughts. I can concentrate um, my own sense of time and space. You can train yourself to do all of this. I'm not by any means anything even remotely close to an adept. I'm self-taught. I don't have anybody. I'm not taking any courses. I have no guru. I have no nothing. Um, I have nothing but my own determination to do it and incredible curiosity because I want to see where this will go. Um, it all looks very religious, unfortunately. <laughs> um, whether I like it or not, I was raised in the Catholic tradition. I'm used to seeing people chanting on rosaries, on their knees and all this stuff. And even to this day when I see it, it's ironic. When I see somebody on their knees doing a rosary thingy, if I'm in, say, the Philippines or Latin America or something, I just, <laughs> you still do that rubbish? And here I am now making a case for it because... I think when I see it, as I mentioned in the previous video, when I see something in the context of an actual uh, religious experience, that's a barrier for me to overcome. When I consciously go into it knowing that, okay, I'm not so much saying that there is no God when I go into this, but I'm leaving God out of it, <laughs> is, best, is the best way that I would approach that. Um, I'm assuming that there's no supernatural anything out here that's that's going to help me in my meditation. It's all up here. I have to do that, I find, or else it gets tainted with the, I don't know, tar of religion or whatever. I do have that revulsion that I keep going back to. Um, and I have to constantly remind myself, it's just, hang on here, you want, you know, you want the experience, you want anything else, and it's not, you know, even, even though you might be uh, if on the rare occasions I do actually chant a Hindu mantra or a Sanskrit mantra, actually, um, you know, I, I've lost that feeling of haram. And again, Hinduism is not a religion that I was raised in, so I don't really have that feeling of Eesh, you know, I don't want to. Be, you know, I don't want to get too close to that. But when I see a Catholic doing exactly the same thing, I sort of go, oh, oh no, nope, not for me. <laughs> I think most people that have actually deliberately broken with the religion of their upbringing uh, have that kind of feeling. Um, everybody else's religion is fine, but your own is not so fine. <laughs> um, so as I say, something happens, it leaves its marks on us when we meditate, when we deliberately manipulate our own inner life. Um, that is very much Indian. That is very much Eastern philosophy. doesn't need God at all. 